What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, and I am with the lovely Mrs. Heineman. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. And so we have our first edition of the Intimacy Card Deck Love Fearlessly Questions. And we're going to do a little unboxing and get into one of these questions. Yeah. So, if you want to be the first to open and put out a question, then let's jump into this. And these are intimacy cards. I don't know. You can't see it. <laughs> can't see. Well, here you go. This is intimacy questions. And we're going to jump into the first question. It is, how do you manage hurt and disappointment growing up? How did you manage hurt and disappointment growing up? That's a good question. Yeah, for me, and of course, this can go as deep. Um, There's so many layers to this, but for the sake of time, we'll um, talk about our personal life. Um, For me, I... Whenever I was struggling with that, um, I didn't really have anyone that I could talk to. Uh, I think it stifled my communication growing up uh, because I felt like I didn't have that safe place when I was a kid trying to process my feelings. Um, Of course, I grew up in the era of children should be seen and not heard. Uh, For me, and I know this sounds strange, (laughs) <laughs> but for me, I was a big sports fan growing up as a kid. And so I used to collect sports cards. And for me, uh, I used to look at the stats on the back of the cards. And I used to read the little bio and the little information and stuff like that. And so I think for me, it was like feeling like I knew something when it came to like sports and sports cards and stuff like that. I think that was uh, my way of communicating to myself because growing up, I always wanted to be in the in the, in the, uh, in the booth with John Madden. Um, I always found myself wanting to have a microphone in my hand, not like a rapper or anything, but just in a booth with John Madden. So to me, that was more of a, I think that's how I managed just like, like my hurt. Like I was just able to kind of talk to myself and made, it made me feel valuable uh, in a sense of like, I knew something like, oh, okay, this is what I'm good at because I didn't have that opportunity at home to express how I felt because my mom was, you know, she was at work. I had to help take care of my little sister. So there was a lot of stuff going on that being a latchkey kid, that's the era we grew up in. I was <laughs> maybe like, nine or ten with a key to the house and having to do uh you know be the little man of the house so during those times of of quiet times there was nothing better than for me to walk up to one of the uh, stores that sold sports cards and i would walk up there and buy some cards open up the card deck and of course i'm maybe telling my age now but on the way home i would just walk and I just had the cards in my hand and that was like relief for me. I would just like look and see who I had in the card deck. I'm like, oh shoot, this is Joe Montana, this is Jerry Rice, or this is, you know, whoever. Oh, this is such a rookie card. And I would just be so happy about just reading the statistics and finding out things. And so by the time I got home, I would uh, tell my friends and stuff about all the stats and stuff like that. Like I was social media before social media. Uh, I think another way, too, was me um, reading Source magazines, like the hip hop magazine. So when I would go to school, I would have my Source magazine. And I guess, I don't know, I I guess a lot of people probably don't know what the Source magazine is, but uh, maybe I'll post a picture or something. And so whenever the new albums came out, whenever there was hip hop artists that were coming out with a new album or talked about them in detail through an interview, I would read it. And I just felt like I was like that information guy. So I think that was the way I managed like hurt and disappointment because I felt like I wasn't hurt growing up as a kid because mom just didn't have 
time. No shade to mom or anything like that. But I think that's how I managed it. And I think that's how I felt like important and people heard me was because there was a lot of stuff that I could discuss when it came to sports or, or hip hop and stuff like that growing up in that era. And that's when people really would listen to me and respect me and I would make mixtapes and mix CDs and stuff like that. And would just know all the stuff. So that was how I would cope with it unknowingly. I didn't know at the time, but looking back, that's how I think I managed my hurt and disappointment. Um, so what are your thoughts? Or how, how did you manage that? For me, I think growing up, I managed, well, I didn't manage hurt and disappointment growing up. We weren't really allowed to be disappointment, disappointed or hurt, hurt about a lot of things. So I don't think when I was growing up that I was really allowed to have feelings about things. So I don't think I learned how to manage or even acknowledge disappointment. I think I even started to learn to expect disappointment in a way. Like I would almost, I wouldn't hope for good things to happen. I would just expect the worst to happen. And that way I wouldn't get disappointed because growing up, we weren't allowed to be disappointed about stuff. We weren't allowed to be hurt by things because we were children. When you're a child, it's like, you don't have to pay any bills. I'm over here struggling to do all these things for you and try to make sure that you're good. Like, what do you have to be mad about? What do you have to be disappointed about? <laughs> like, I'm taking care of you. So you d didn't have that availability. And I wouldn't even say availability. You didn't, you didn't have the right almost when growing up to be sad or disappointed or hurt by anything because you were a child. Um, so when I was disappointed about things, uh, because I could think a few times where I really was disappointed about things, I started to just expect the worst. So I think that was how I coped with it. And I even brought that into my adulthood. Like I had to start changing my mindset because I became a pessimist. Like I it literally for years just expected the worst out of things. Like I just knew something bad was gonna happen because that was my life. And people are disappointing, people are gonna um, hurt you. And so I just expected those things from people and from things and the things that I wanted in life. So that way I wasn't disappointed. I just expected it to happen, but I've learned through therapy and through loving God and finding myself and going on this journey of just loving myself and loving God more. Like, it's okay to want more for yourself. It's okay to um, expect good things to happen to you because that's what our God's promise is. Like, he promises to give good things to us. He promises to take care of us. He promises to give us abundance. And it's okay to expect good things. Um, but as far as managing disappointment growing up, definitely didn't have that skill. And if it was a skill, the only skill I knew was to just expect it. And that be it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that's just one question. <laughs> There's so many more uh, in this deck. So make sure, you know, you could use this with uh, your significant other, your spouse. There's even maybe some like you can even discuss with family members. I think that can really open the door for conversations that probably was never had that yeah. need to be had. Sure. So, uh, Make sure you go pick up your copy. It will be in the description below. Just uh, search down there. You will see it for the Intimacy Card Deck. Make sure you check it out. Uh, go to the website at scarytoremarry.com and the Love Fearlessly page is there as well. So you can make sure that you pick up some 
Scary to Remarry merch, um, the Love Fearlessly brand, we have that going on uh, courtesy of Miss Heineman. So make sure you check that out as well. Got a lot of great stuff. Go check out the YouTube channel, subscribe, uh, listen to the podcast, leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, this is Sean Heineman. And Clarissa Heineman. All right, Brave Arts community, we are out.